Good day, madam. <coughs> we have uh, principal madam with us. Shall we start? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll start the class. Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, respected uh, principal, madam. Uh, Punam Nathani, madam. Uh, respected program coordinator, uh, Dr. P. J. Shinde, sir. Respected all the senior uh, faculty members and dear students. I, Professor Shital Gude Patil, uh, coordinator of the course. On behalf of the Dayanand Education Society, Dayanand Law College, Latur, uh, welcome, uh, welcomes you. Uh, as you know, the ADR subject is burning and uh, uh, an important subject uh, and needs uh, uh, needs of the uh, needs of ours in the legal system. Uh, so, uh, keeping in view of uh, this object, our college uh, has uh, organized a certificate uh, course in ADR. Uh, now. For the uh, teaching of this uh, course, the college has arranged the following faculty members. Uh, uh, we'll teach you uh, the said course. First of all, uh, now first of all, I would like to introduce uh, respected uh, advocate Shetty sir. Uh, then respected uh, professor Swati Patil madam. Uh, respected professor Priya Patil madam. Uh, then respected professor Unnati Zadho madam. Uh, doctor, uh, respected Dr. Mumta, Madam, and uh, <clears throat> respected Professor Sham Patil, sir. Now, uh, all the all my dear students, uh, hence uh, I would uh, like to request you that uh, you all uh, meticulously attend the lecture and uh, take the benefit of this uh, course. Uh, okay. Uh, now here, um, I over to respected Shetty, sir. Uh, start your class and uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, and Madam. Uh, yes, and yeah, I want to extend warm wishes and wish you all the very best for the course. Last time, due to COVID situation, due to lockdown period, we could not conduct these classes. And these are value-added courses. These are add-on courses. It will be adding value to your degrees. So I request each one of you to please attend seriously the classes. Uh, apart from your teaching time, morning time, evening, we have selected. And only for this course, we are permitting online. Uh, we are providing online classes. So again, it is another opportunity for every one of you to please attend the class seriously and get the certificates. Wish you all the best. And thank you all. Uh, the resource person will be trying to call the resource persons from uh, uh, different regions and different places from different faculties. We are trying it. But our own resources also, I want to thank them for giving their time. And special thanks to Gute, madam. Thank you. Thank you, madam, uh, to give me this uh, wonderful opportunity. And uh, 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 thank you, uh, Shetty, sir. You are ready to get ready. And you uh, are ready to get ready. Uh, and you are ready to get students. Uh, Shetty, sir, you are ready to get ready. You are ready to get ready. You are ready to get ready. Okay, uh, so attend lecture, uh, attendance is uh, necessary. Okay, Shetty, sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you, good day, madam. Respected okay. principal, madam. Uh, our uh, inspiration, uh, Dr. Ponam Natani, madam. And uh, uh, today's coordinator, Sheetal Gute, madam. My faculty members as well as uh, students. Uh, today we will have an interaction on the topic of an introduction to Legal Services Authority Act 1987. Before we proceed with the provisions of Legal Services Authority Act of 1987, I would like to focus on preamble of the Constitution of India. Why this is important? Why we should go through the preamble of the Constitution of India? Because we have solemnly resolved uh, to secure to all its citizens justice, social, economic, and political. So, what does it mean? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> we have solemnly resolved to provide justice to each and every one. Now, this is only possible not, not by just providing this in your books, but you're actually implementing that. 
unless you provide an opportunity to each and every one. This resolve, what you have resolved in the preamble of the in, uh, preamble of the Constitution, will not be brought, uh, put into uh, within let, let, letter and spirit. Now, to provide this to the to the people, what we have, uh, what provision we have, is in uh, director principles of state policy, that is Article 39A, Part 4 of the Constitution, direct to principles of state policy. In its Article 39A, what it provides is uh, that state shall secure that the operation of the legal system promotes justice on a basis of equal opportunity and shall in particular provide free legal aid. Now, this is the basic, uh, <clears throat> basic requirement of providing justice to all. How you do that? Through an enactment. That is what we are going to discuss, Legal Services Authority Act 1987, which is originated from our preamble of the Constitution as well as the principles of state policy under Article 39A which provides that there should be an equal opportunity and shall in particular provide free legal aid by suitable legislation. When you say suitable legislation, the result is Legal Services Authority Act 1987, which is enacted for this purpose of fulfill, fulfilling whatever is provided under Article 39A. To ensure that opportunity for securing justice are not denied to any citizen by reason of economic or other disability. If a particular section of the society is deprived, deprived of this opportunity to seek to, uh, to reach the judiciary system, judicial system, to reach the court, then you cannot say that justice is provided to everyone. If even, even, a, even a single person is not allowed and has the opportunity to go near the judiciary, Reason may be different, could be economic or any other disability. If you are not able to give justice to even one person, your result, whatever you resolved in the preamble of the constitution is not fulfilled. So the, for that purpose, to fulfill this, the solemnly made resolution to give justice to each and every one, there is a provision under DPSP, Director Principles of State Policy, that is 39A, which is which provides an enactment to be made, made so that each and every person gets an opportunity uh, to reach the judicial system as well as when they are not able to reach the judicial system because of maybe economic reason, then you are supposed to provide them legal aid free of cost. So that is the result of enactment of Legal Services Authority Act. So Article 14 and Article 22 one of the constitution also make it obligatory for the state to ensure equality before law and illegal system which promote justice on the basis of equal opportunity to all now there is a provision under article 14 equality equal before law now when you when you are deprived of certain rights it could be a fundamental rights or any other legal rights if you are not able to reach the judicial system seeking redressal from them that becomes inequality. Article 49, whatever Article 14, sorry, 14 is provide, providing equality before law. That will not be uh, in, effected, effective in its legal meaning or what it intends, the, the makers of the constitution, what they intended to do through Article 14. So we need to have legal aid so that every person who cannot go to the courts for the redress of his grievances. Legal aid survey strives to ensure that constitutional pledge is fulfilled in its letter and spirit. What is the constitutional pledge that we will provide justice to each and everyone? Now to fulfill this pledge, we need to ensure that legally aid is given to the needy people. Uh, now, which is this is available to the poor, downtrodden, and weaker section of the society. Nas National Legal Services Authority is the topmost authority as far as implementation of Legal Services Authority Act is concerned, and that is shortly known as NALSA. 
which makes various policies as far as providing of legal uh, aid, legal aid and uh, other provisions for amicable settlement of disputes, which is located in New Delhi, which is the topmost authority as far as uh, Legal Services Authority Act is concerned. NALSA. Functioning of NALSA. NALSA lays down policies, principles, guidelines, and frames effective and economical schemes for the state legal services authorities to implement the legal services program throughout the country. Now, it is the main body. NALSA is the main body or authority which lays down various principles and policies and guidelines which are to be followed by the state state authorities, state legal services authorities, Essex Legal Services Authority and Taluka level legal services committees. Why it is required? Why these guidelines uh, policies are required to provide legal aid, which is promised under Article 39A, uh, where it directs directs the government to provide such legal aid to the needy people. Primarily, the state le legal services authorities. This district legal services authorities, taluka legal service committees, etc. have been asked to discharge the following main functions on a regular basis. So there are various steps, stages where the provisions, which is policy provisions, policies and principles and guidelines, which are provided by the NALSA, uh, which is to be followed by the state legal services authorities, district legal services authority, as well as uh, taluka legal services committees so that the necessary necessary or the purpose for which the enactment was made is served to the core. The state legal services authority is headed by honorable chief justice of respective high court. Every state has uh, a high court and the chief justice of that particular high court will head the state legal services authority. He is known as pattern in chief of the state legal services authority. In every district, legal services authority has been constituted to implement legal services programs in the district. So as far as the activities which are to be carried out under the legal services authority act 1987 within a district, which is that responsibility is given to the legal services authority, the office of which is in every district court premises. Even in Latur, we have legal services authority in the district court premises, which provides legal aid and uh, the needy. The district legal services authority is situated in the district court complex in every district and chaired by the district judge of the respective court. Free legal services offered by NALSA, state authority and district authority. We will see what are the when you say free, free legal aid, what does it mean? Free legal services entail the provision of free legal aid in civil and criminal matters. In both matters, free legal aid is given. Civil, it could be civil matters or it could be criminal matters. But this is available only to the poor and needy or marginalized people who cannot afford the services of a lawyer for the conduct of a case or legal proceedings in any court, tribunal, or before an authority. If you know the case uh, which Kapila Hingarani uh, uh, pursued, pursued in the year 1980, Hosein Khatun versus State of Bihar. So in that case, many prisoners were languishing behind the uh, behind the bar in the prison without uh, having a proper trial, just because they could not afford advocates. So Kapila Hingarani brought up a petition before the Supreme Court whereby she questioned whether by retaining this, by putting these people beyond a reasonable period, which is prescribed under law, uh, whether their fundamental right is infringed or not. On the basis of that petition, Supreme Court released almost 40,000 of the prisoners. Why? Because their fundamental right is deprived of. And this this is this is resulted only because they could not afford a lawyer in the court. So this is the basic purpose for, for which um, we can say that from that case onwards, this, uh, this initiative was taken up.
the Supreme Court on legal aid, the linkage between Article 21 and the right to legal aid was forged in the decision of Hussein Ara Khatun versus State of Bihar. Just now we discussed that case, where the court appealed to the plight of the thousands of under trials languishing in the jails in Bihar for years on end without ever being represented by a lawyer. For example, if a person has committed a minor, minor offense for which only six months of one year of punishment is prescribed under the IPC. Now suppose without trial, he has been spending so, so many years, maybe four years, five years behind bar. Now it is unjustified. He is losing. He is deprived of his fundamental right under Article 21, that is right to life and liberty. So to enforce this liberty, we need to have a speedy trial um, as well as free legal aid. This is what observed by the Supreme Court on legal aid. The court declared that there can be no doubt that speedy trial, and by speedy trial we mean reasonably expeditious trial, is an integral and essential part of fundamental right to life and liberty ensured in Article 21. After this case, Supreme Court also observed that speedy trial is a part of your uh, part of Article 21. Without speedy trial, even sub suppose a particular person is accused of some crime, later on he was acquitted of all char charges, being innocent person. If he spends one or two years behind bars, you can imagine in what plight he might begin. He is losing his his fundamental right to life and liberty is is violated without having committed any offence. So that is why we need to have legal. This is the observation made by the Supreme Court. The court pointed out that Article 39A emphasized that free legal service was an inalienable element of reasonable, fair, and just. When you say that a trial should be reasonable, fair, and just, then legal aid should be the a part of this reasonable, fair, and just procedure. So why, unless you have free legal services, the trial cannot be reasonable, fair, and just when it is delayed uh, for a longer period of time. And there's no certainty that it will at all, the trial will go on at all. So free legal aid is one of the elements, essential elements of reasonable, fair and just procedure. So in his inimitable style, Justice Bhagwati, if you know Justice Bhagwati, eminent, eminent lawyer of Supreme Court, what he declared, legal aid is really nothing else but equal justice in action. So it is the one of the basic elements, legal aid, where you can provide justice equally to each and every one. Because unless you have uh, a person who can represent you in the in the court of law, uh, you cannot say that there was a fair and fair justice. Legal aid is in fact the delivery system of social justice. If free legal service is not provided to such an accused, the trial itself may run the risk of being vitiated as contravening Article 21, and we have no doubt that every state government would try to avoid such possible eventuality. This is what Bhagwati observed. In case the trial is not speedy, the people who are accused of languishing behind the prison without having any trial, then without having a legal aid, the trial, even if, if it is conducted after a period of time, will be vitiated. We, can, we cannot say that justice is served. This is what was observed by Justice Bhagwati. He reiterated this in the in uh, Subdas versus Union Territory of Arunachal Pradesh and said it may therefore now be taken as settled law that free legal, free legal assistance as at state cost is a fundamental right of a person accused of an offense. He, he also observed in this case, Subdas versus Union of Territory, that now it is a settled law. Settled law, law means it is an accepted norm. At state's cost, the person who is being accused of, if he cannot afford a lawyer, then at the state cost, he must be provided with a, with free legal aid, and it, it is become a fundamental right as well. This part of the narration would be incomplete without referring to other astute architect of human rights jurisprudence, that is Justice Krishna Iyer. So these, bo both of these, Justice Krishna Iyer, 
and uh, P. N. Bhagwati, both are pioneers of uh, public interest litigation, as well as uh, the architect of human rights jurisprudence, where they uh, argued in favor of legal aid. So, in M. H. Huskot versus State of Maharashtra, uh, Krishnaya declared that if a prisoner sentenced to imprisonment is virtually unable to exercise his constitutional and statutory right of appeal, inclusive of special leave to appeal. So you have the right to appeal. When you are, suppose you are convicted at the lower court, you have, have an authority, sorry, you have a right. You have a right to appeal to the higher court, the judiciary. Now it is, maybe it is not possible because you cannot afford a high court or Supreme Court judge. So high court or Supreme Court lawyer because of the high fees which is charged by them. It, what he said that if, if he is not able to exercise his constitutional and statutory right to appeal, inclusive of special leave to appeals uh, under 136, Article 136 of the Constitution, there is a provision to uh, file an appeal to the Supreme Court, which is uh, which is known as special leave petition. Um, and if you are deprived of this because of uh, legal assistance, then it, he said it is it is implicit in the court under Article 142, read with Article 21 and Article 39 of the Constitution. Power to assign counsel for such imprisoned individual for doing complete justice is within the, within the state. If the state is, does not provide you, you cannot say that the, the justice is administered. As of Sangu So it is the, the responsibility is on the state to provide uh, legal aid and the, the, the very purpose of enactment of this act, Legal Services Authority Act 1987, is that to provide legal aid so that you can say that there is an administration of justice to the court. However, the major drawback in the existing scheme of organization of Loka Dalat under Chapter 6 of the said act is that system of Lok Adalat is mainly based on compromise or settlement between the parties. So Lok Adalat is one of the provisions where disputes can be settled, settled uh, amicably. Now, it's one of the drawbacks under this Lok Adalat, which is a provision under uh, Legal Services Authority Act, is that unless there is a compromise between the parties, the, the dispute will be will not be resolved. Then again, you have to go back to the courts. If the parties do not arrive at any compromise or settlement, the case is either returned to the court of law of the parties or advised to seek remedy in the court of law. This causes unnecessary delay in the dispensation of justice. This is one of the drawback of Lok Adalat. They, they are not given the power to decide a case on the merit except permanent Lok Adalat, which has the authority to decide the case on merit. But the regular routinely held local analysts, they do not have the power to decide the case on a, on the merit. And to a great extent, if there is no uh, com compromise, uh, the, the case will be further delayed. If local analysts are given power to decide the cases on merits in case parties fails to arrive at any compromise or settlement, this problem can be tackled to a great extent. Further, the cases which arise in relation to public utility services, such as Mahanagar Telephone Nigam Limited, Delhi Vidyut Board, etc., or any electricity board, need to be settled urgently so that people get justice without delay, even at pre litigation stage. See, sometimes what happens, these government organizations, public utility services, telephone, or you get a bill which is enormous. For example, if you usually you, uh, normally you get a bill of 9,000, 10,000, maybe 12, 15,000, but sometimes it is possible that there is there, there are some examples we, who have, when people have got a bill of enormous amount into into lakhs, run into lakhs. Now you need to have uh, a dispute resolution system where such disputes can be uh, on the basis of evidence they can be speedily resolved. Because here, see, what these people do, these uh, utility, public utility services, they ask you to deposit the money, then we will see the, from where you're going to bring this kind of money in lakhs of rupees. So unless you have the power to 
See, what is required here is amicable solution. Now, suppose the board does not agree for amicable solution, then you have the, all the efforts of local dalat is it, it becomes null and void. So, what is required is they should be given a given a power or authority to decide to decide the case on the merit. So, therefore, it is proposed to amend the Legal Services Authority Act 1987 to set up permanent loka dalats for providing compulsory pre-legative mechanism for cancellation and settlement of cases relating to public utility service and the permanent loka dalat is the result of this demand now provision of free legal aid may include now when we say free legal aid, legal aid what does it mean which is, which is as follows payment of court fee free legal aid includes payment of court fees process fees and all other chargeable payable or incurred in connection with any legal proceedings. All the expenses which are going to be uh, incurred in connection with the legal proceedings that could be a court fees, process fees and all other charges may be including the fees of the, uh, of the, of the advocate representing that particular person. Providing advocate in legal proceedings obtaining and supply of certified copies of orders and other documents in legal proceedings. You see, the court require original documents or certified documents. Now, for this purpose, you need to spend some money in getting, uh, getting these certified copies. That expense is also spent by the state, uh, and state provides all these copies. Preparation of appeal, paper book, including printing and translation of documents in legal proceedings. See, you have to prepare. If you are aggrieved by the by the decision of the lower court, then you will go for an appeal in the higher judiciary. To make an appeal, you have to prepare. You need to have some documents, the copy of the order of the lower court, judgment of the lower court. That has to be supposed if it is in other regional language, then it is to be it has to be converted, translated into the into English. That also costs. Then you have to give a paper book, the complete uh, history of that particular case that is called as paper book and preparation for appeal. All uh, uh, has to, there's certain kind of expenses for all this preparation. That is also provided under legal aid. Rendering of any service in the conduct of any case or other legal proceedings before any court or other authority or a tribunal. Any other services which is required uh, when a court, when a case is before any court or authority or tribunal, giving of advice on any legal matter, all this comes under provide provision of legal aid. Now, who is eligible under the provisions of this act uh, for free legal services? The sections of the society, as enlisted under section 12 of the Legal Services Authority Act, are entitled for free legal services. They are women and children. Women and children are to be provided free legal services or free legal aid whenever they face any kind of prosecution or any disputes, any other civil disputes or any criminal charges on them. If they are, if they are to defend themselves, then if it, if it is women and children, they should be provided free legal, free legal aid. And members of SC and ST, industrial workmen, under Workmen's Compensation Act or any agreed party under labor law uh, uh, they, who are employed in industry. Victim of trafficking in human beings or beggar as referred to Article 23 of the Constitution. Bonded labor, trafficking of human beings. If they are victims, uh, they will be provided legal aid. Victims of mass disaster, like natural disasters, violence, man-made disaster, uh, like violence, flood, natural disaster, drought, earthquake, industrial disaster, the victims of such calamities or disaster, they, sh they will be provided legal aid. A mentally ill or otherwise disabled person will also be provided with legal aid. Person in custody, including custody in protective home within the meaning of clause G of section two of the Immoral Traffic Prevention Act 1956. A victim who is in custody, uh, including the custody in protective home, 
children below the age of children uh, person is below the age of 18 years in a juvenile home with the meaning of clause j of section 2 of the juvenile justice act um, if, if the person is a juvenile in a psychiatric hospital or psychiatric nursing home within the meaning of clause section 2 of the mental health act 18, 1987 a person whose annual income is less than 9000 or such other higher amount as may be prescribed by the state if his personal income is less than 9000 rupees then he will be given uh, free legal aid or if the state decides that a person of higher income should be given legal aid, then he should also be given uh, free legal aid. But decision is, is made by the state government. Now, how to apply? How the procedure to make an application to get the free legal aid? A person in need of free legal services can approach the concerned authority or committee through an application which could either be made by sending in written form or so if, if a person needs uh, legal services, pre legal services under this act, how he can do that? He can make an application and approach the committee or an authority which is uh, formed for that particular purpose. You can, he can make a physical application and approach these committees or by filling up the forms prepared by the said authorities, stating in brief the reason for legal either he could directly make an application or he can fill up a form in a prescribed form which is provided by the authorities but he should give the reason why he is seeking legal aid whether uh, he he falls in the criteria which is prescribed under the act and they, there are pre legal uh, sorry paralegal volunteers who can assist these people a person can and also we we from the college students act as pre legal volunteers in uh, district legal services authority so this is one of the tasks where they can help uh, people filling up the forms uh, where they need legal services uh, free legal services a person can also apply online for getting legal aid to any legal services institution so your online application also can be made instead of making a physical application or filling the form which is provided by the by the legal services authority uh, you can make an online application and it is available at nalsa's website national legal services authority ache ek website hai teche madhe you can uh, make an application for free legal services now lok adalat one of the one of the platform which is provided under Legal Services Authority Act 1987, where um, at a low cost, low cost, you can amicably settle your disputes. Yes, anybody has any problem? I'm audible properly. Yes, anybody can answer me. Am I audible properly? Yes, sir. Yes. So Loka Adalat is a platform which is provided under the Legal Services Authority Act 1987, where the disputing party, instead of going to the normal formal courts, they can they can resolve their disputes without any cost uh, in such Loka Adalats amicably. So Loka Adalat is a for forum where the disputes cases pending in the court of law or pre compromise amicably. So what are the provisions under this act? Even if a, a case is pending before the court, if the parties decide or the court directs them to go for a settlement before the Loka Dalat, then even such pending cases can be brought before the Loka Dalat. Otherwise, pre-litigation before going to the court, that case also can be settled in a Loka Dalat. The Loka Dalat has been given statutory status under the Legal Services Authority Act 1987. Under the said act, award made by the Loka Adalat is deemed to be the decree of civil court and is final and binding on all the parties and no appeals lies before court against its award. So what is important here is the, the 
see in regular courts what happens is if you if you don't succeed in the lower courts you can appeal to this high court and then you can again you can appeal to the supreme court but the case drags on for several years but what happens in lok adalat the whatever award is given by the lok adalat is final and binding on the parties why because you have settled that case amicably through your consent once you have given the consent and that case is settled by the lok adalat you cannot make an appeal it is binding on you the, the purpose of this provision is uh, the, the fast decision uh, or fast resolving of your case and now what kind of cases can be taken to the lok adalat nature of cases to be referred to the lok adalat any case pending before any court even if the cases are pending before the court that can be uh, that can be brought before the lok adalat uh, either at the own motion of the uh, of the parties or uh, at the direction of the court any dispute which has not been brought before any court and is likely to filed before the court even at pre litigation stage and the case which is being brought before the lok adalat has not been filed before any court that is called as pre litigation stage provided that any matter relating to an offense not compound will under the law be settled in lok adalat so some of the petty crimes can also be settled settled in lok adalat uh, under the crpc which is provided in list 1 and 2 uh, of the compoundable cases can be settled in lok adalat but more grievous uh, crimes cannot be settled in it is a state matter and state will charge the person who is accused of that crime and that will go to the sessions court later on it can be appealed to high court and supreme court but those cases cannot be tried uh, settled amicably uh, in in uh, lok adalat how to get a case referred to the lok adalat for settlement uh, first of all case pending before the court if the parties agree to settle the dispute in lok adalat or one of the parties make an application to the court the court is satisfied that the matter is an appropriate one for settlement of lok adalat how you can uh, uh, bring a case which is pending before the court before the lok adalat uh, both the parties agree this is one of the options both the parties agree to bring that case before the lok adalat or one of the parties makes an application to the court or the court is satisfied that the matter is an appropriate one to settle uh, court also can give direction suppose is the matter is pending before the court it is going going on dragging on and the court feels that the parties if they make a amicable solution the the dispute can be resolved in the lok adalat the court might direct the parties to the dispute go go before the lok adalat settle yourself instead of wasting time of so many years in the court secondly any dispute at pre litigative stage which is not filed before the court yet so such case also can be taken up before the lok adalat the state legal services authority or district legal services authority as the case may be on receipt of an application from any one of the parties to any pre litigation stage matter refer such matter to the lok adalat for amicable settlement now we will see the permanent lok adalat there is a different difference between uh, the regular lok adalat and permanent lok adalat as we have discussed already in a regular lok adalat we do the the uh, lok adalat does not have the authority to decide case on a mer on on merit after taking looking at the evidence which is provided by the parties the court the lok adalat does not have the authority to decide the how they decide if the party both the parties agree amicably if they consent for a settlement then only the lok adalat can give a, a final award there is no authority on lok adalat to decide a case on merit but permanent lok adalat has this special authority to decide the case on case on merit now the second difference between the regular adalat lok adalat and the 
example of this, like a permanent Loka Dalat works throughout the year, whereas uh, the regular uh, Loka Dalat is organized only once in uh, two, three months, or four months, depending on the number of cases which is pending for such resolution of disputes. Now we'll see about per permanent Loka Dalat. The other type of Loka Dalat is the permanent Loka Dalat organized is under section 22b of the legal services authority act 1997 permanent loka dalats have been set up as a permanent bodies with a chairman and two members providing compulsory pre-litigative mechanism what is important here is you should not go thus the case should not be pending before a court only such cases which are not pending before the court which which are pre-litigative and pre-litigative stage, only those case, cases can be brought before permanent local dalat. For cancellation and settlement of cases relating to public utility services like transport, I, postal, I, telegraph, electricity, which are public utility services, I, we need um, immediate solution. As I said before, sometimes these public utility services uh, forces the client by giving a enormous amount of bill in lakhs of rupees they, they say what they say is you deposit money deposit this money first then we will see so when a person is forced to make a deposit of this kind of money you need to have a, a speedy a speedy resolution of dispute so that is because of um, establishment of permanent local dalat where they can decide a case on merit not on amicable solution. If there is no amicable solution, they can decide the case on merit. <clears throat> See, the permanent local dialogue gets, gets the jurisdiction to decide the dispute, provided that the dispute does not relate to any offense. Then they can decide it on merit. Further, the award of the permanent local dialogue is final and binding on all the parties. The jurisdiction of the permanent local dialogue is up to 10 lakhs. However, the jurisdiction of this court is limited only up to 10 lakhs. Here, if the parties fail to reach the settlement, the permanent Lok Adalat has a jurisdiction to decide the case on merit. This is one additional authority which is given to the Lok Adalat, which is very essential as far as public utility service is concerned. Um, when there is a dispute between uh, the people who are uh, being served by this public utility services as far as their charge is concerned. The award of the permanent Adalat is final and binding about the parties. The Lok Adalat may conduct the proceedings in such a manner as it considers appropriate, taking into account the circumstances of the case, wishes, uh, wishes of the parties like request to hear oral settlement, speedy settlement of disputes, etc. Then we have mobile or Lok Adalat. Now, what is the purpose of mobile? Now, what is the meaning of mobile Lok Adalat is that um, at the time of local, uh, conducting or organizing the uh, regular local dalats, we also have a vehicle. It could be a uh, van where there's a panel. Uh, panel which decides the cases by reaching out to the people, by reaching to their villages, um, villages places where wherever there is a case uh, where the parties want to resolve their cases through amicable solution. If you are not able to come to us, we will come to you and then settle down the disputes. Now, the, the ultimate pur purpose is to maintain peace and peace and order in the society where there should not be any kind of disputes. This is the this is the ultimate motive of uh, the, the provisions under Legal Services Authority Act. All right, we were concluded this so because of less time, the availability of time is restricted to only 40, 45 minutes. I had to rush, I had to uh, address you in a speedy way. So I hope you have understood. Thank you very much and over to Ute Patil now. Uh, yes, uh, OK. Uh, students, uh, uh, if you have any questions, please ask. Am I audible? Ma Madam, I, for I forgot. Yes, yes, you are audible. Uh, Madam, I forgot to record the conversation. Uh, 
Uh, I downloaded the attendance, but I forgot to record if somebody has recorded. Hi, OK, sir. Uh, you uh, Rahul ne kiya hoga, sir. OK. If any clarification, if you anybody of you need any clarification, if you have any questions, you can raise now. I think we can conclude. There is no questions. Uh, yes, sir. OK. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, and uh, students, uh, sir, in class, sir, under Mamta Madam, sir, class, Kunara. Uh, okay, so join, continue. Uh, link, other uh, uh, link. With the, with the kind. Ha. Huh. With the kind permission of principal, madam, and uh, the coordinator, uh, Shital Gute, madam, uh, I will take a leave. Thank you very much. For thank you, thank you, sir. Patiently yes. hearing me. Thank you. Thank you.